So now that you guys are comfortable writing your electron configurations, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to actually write electron configurations, but write it in the shorthand form, which is actually a lot quicker and a lot more simple than the longhand electron configuration. When I give you these types of problems, I will stipulate from now on whether I want you to write shorthand or longhand, and you'll just have to follow my directions. What I'll do after I explain shorthand electron configuration here, I'll then explain a couple of the exceptions to the electron configuration because you always have to have your exceptions. So what I'm going to do right now, let's read through the instructions for how to write shorthand electron configuration together. So the first step, it tells you to find the noble gas from the row above your element. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to come up, we're going to do nickel, and we'll do yttrium together, and then we'll move, you'll, you will do practice problems without me. So if we look at nickel, okay. here's my periodic table, here's nickel. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move up one row and across to the noble gases. Remember, these are your noble gases. So for nickel, I would put argon. Okay. So in brackets, I've got to put this symbol in brackets, I'm going to put argon. So I've got my bracket, I put AR, and then I close my brackets. What this represents, and I'll go back, by putting argon in brackets, I am saying that we need to consider um, all of the other configurations that come before argon. So. This includes, this argon includes 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p6. And so just by writing this in brackets, I've now included that entire electron configuration so you don't have to write it. That's why we call it shorthand. And then I'm going to continue from there. So after I would have written 3p6, I would write 4s2 and then 3d1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Eight. So now I'm going to write that. So 4s2, 3d8. And that's it. So the only thing that's changed is rather than writing 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, I can just write argon in brackets. All right, so what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to write the electron configuration for yttrium with you, and then you'll move on and you'll do a couple without me. All right, so let's look here at your periodic table. You've got Y, which is right here, yttrium. Okay, so remember, you're going to move up one and all the way across to your noble gases, which in this case is krypton. Okay, so I've got, I'm going to put krypton in brackets, KR. And then I'm going to continue on from there. So if we go back, oops, we've got krypton and I need to keep going. So from krypton, it would be 5s2 and then 4d1. So remember, krypton, by writing krypton in brackets like this, I've basically, I'm implying I've already gone through all of the steps from 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, um, 4p6, right? I've included all of that, and now I'm going to keep going. So it's 5s2, 4d1. Um, so 5s2 and 4d1. So what I want you to do right now, pause this video because otherwise I'm going to move on to the exceptions. And I want you to write the shorthand electron configuration for potassium and the shorthand electron configuration for selenium, SE. All right, so pause me please. All right, now we're going to move on and I'm going to explain to you guys a couple of the exceptions to the electron configuration rule. So we're going to write, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to show you what the electron configuration for chromium should be based on what we've learned so far. And then I'm going to show you what it actually is. So for chromium, it should be 1s2, 2s2, 
2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, and then 3d. And so chromium is one, two, three, four electrons. Now, what you should notice, I'm just going to do a little tangent. You don't need to write this, but just notice. If I were to draw my orbital diagram for D, so there are five boxes for D. This D orbital right here, this 3D orbital, is really awkwardly almost filled. So there are four electrons filling these orbitals, but there's a fifth one that's missing. Okay. Now, it would be much more stable for this element if its electron, if its d orbital were actually half filled. And so it will actually become half filled. Now where in the world did this electron come from? Well, what chromium does, what happens here is this electron from the 4s is going to be taken so that it can be added to the 3d orbital so that it will be half filled because it's better to have two half-filled orbitals than one that's completely filled and one that's awkwardly not almost half-filled. And so what the actual electron configuration for chromium is going to be is 1s2, 2s2, um, 2p6, all of this stays the same, 3s2, 3p6, 4s, instead of 4s2 it's 4s1, because one electron was taken to be put into the d orbital, and then 3d5. So you might be saying, okay, well, when do I know that this is going to happen, that this exception is going to occur? So let's look back quickly at your periodic table. If you look at your periodic table, for chromium, for this entire group right here, this exception will occur. Because if you notice, this is 3d4, so it wants to become 3d5. This would be 3d, uh, sorry, 4d4, so it's gonna become 4d5. This would be 5d4, so it will become um, 5d5. And this would be 6d4, so it's gonna become 6d5. So this entire row, okay, this entire group, this column, not row, this entire column if you are writing the electron configuration, keep in mind you will never have D4. You're never going to have this right here. That will never happen. It will always become D5 by stealing an electron from the S orbital that comes before it. All right? So that's one exception. And so if I were to actually write out, give me one sec. If I were to write out when this also happens, it's for any, when you have, sorry about this. When you have a half-filled S and a half-filled D orbital, it's for all of those elements that are in that group. So you have chromium, you have manganese, you have tungsten. Okay, you've got all four of these. All right, now let's look at copper because you're gonna have a very similar exception, but it's slightly different. So for copper, the electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, and then that is 3d9. Now, what you should realize is just like with the chromium example, this orbital is awkwardly not full. It's so close to being full and not half full this time, completely full. So you can fit a total of 10 electrons in the d orbital and instead, I've only got nine. Okay, So what's going to happen is that you're going to add one more electron here. So this will become D10. And you get that electron from the 4s. And so what the actual electron configuration for copper is, is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, um, 4s1 rather than 4s2 because you take the electron from the 4s and this becomes 3d10. And the reasoning behind this for both of these 
is that when your electrons are organized in this form, that it's half filled, half filled, this is half filled orbital, right? The S is half filled, this is completely filled D orbital. It's much more stable than if it's awkwardly, these two are full, but this is almost half filled, but not quite, and this one's almost completely filled, but not quite. Okay, so if I go back to my periodic table one more time, this exception happens for the elements that are in copper's group. So you've got copper, you've got silver, you've got gold, and you've got RG. So I will write these out for you. So these occur when you have copper. when you have silver, AG, when you have AU, and when you have RG, I believe. I can't read. Yes, RG. All right, so that's it. So what we've gone over today, you've learned shorthand electron configuration. You've also learned the exceptions to electron configuration. So what I want you to do for homework, just as an aside, right here in this section in your workbook, I want you to write the shorthand, so shorthand electron configuration of silver, AG. So shorthand electron configuration of silver. So that will incorporate learning how to write shorthand, which you did, and then learning about the exceptions. And that's all I got for you guys.